Welcome to the NASM CPT podcast and live webcast on Facebook Live. I want to say thank you for joining us today. Uh, today I have a guest and this guest and I go pretty far back because he was working with NASM back uh, before I had started with NASM and that was in 2006 when I started with NASM. Uh, and then there was a group right before me. There was a guy named Tony Ambler Wright, there was Wendy Batts, and there was this guy. This is Marty Miller. And so Marty Miller is going to be joining me today. We're going to primarily be talking about fitness and tech and what is some of the interesting tech that's going on in fitness. And, uh, and anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce Marty. I'm going to have you introduce yourself, actually. And then I want to talk and chat and just hang out for a little bit and tell you a little bit about how you inspired me to a couple of things. And uh, and then we'll get into the meat of it. So go ahead, introduce yourself, my friend. Awesome. Well, Rick, thanks for having me. Uh, this is a great opportunity. I love just getting out there and talking to the NASM family. So I, if you can believe it, I've been at this for 15 years now and never get bored of it. It's always seems like there's some new content, new ways we can spin it. And then obviously in our environment today, using that same science in a different way. The science doesn't change, right? It's just how we go about what goes on in the career around us. So, you know, my background, sports medicine, athletic trainer, started off in professional baseball and then got more into the fitness side of things and fell in love with the content. And really, I think it's created a passion for me from an education standpoint. Once I started teaching for NASM, I really wanted to develop my skill set and how I can disseminate this information. So, you know, building curriculums, building, you know, processes to digest this and then make it reproducible. And then obviously teaching for Cal U. And now my new role with Techno Gym as director of education. It's now, you know, using my background on a broader scale to see if I can get this information out to the most amount of fitness professionals possible. Because at the end of the day, they have the greatest impact on the front lines of fitness. And obviously we could call healthcare at this point too. Yeah, that is very true. I think, uh, I think sometimes we minimize the credit that, that the fitness industry should get when it comes to health and wellness, um, not just fitness. And so um, I, it was amazing. Uh, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld posted something on his Instagram account yesterday, and it was basically what we already know, but just more evidence to show it, that in, in aging populations, the people who exercise regularly versus people that don't and the significant difference between all major pathology and all morbidity and mortality across the board with people who are fit versus those who do not practice and exercise regularly is incredible it was yeah. incredible so to I see that with even covid that fit people are having a better chance. But then also, you know, I went by and I said some I'm like, I'm still waiting for that first research. It says, oh, stop exercising is bad for you. Okay. Haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, it's That one's going to be a, a tough one, I think. Yeah. With, uh, with all the research that's behind us, it's kind of like that concern with uh, people eating too much broccoli, as I often hear people in the diet world say. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, thank you for this. And let me just point this out. It was you who started it, and then there was Kyle Stoll, who followed suit, and between the two of you going back and getting your doctorates, mm -hmm. uh, I was starting to feel a little left out. So <laughs> you had come before me with your education, uh, or with being with NASM, and then Kyle came in, and he was years after I had showed up, and yeah. he went back and started getting his doctorate, and I was like, oh, man, like... <laughs> I really would love to do something. And then and then Cal U's program came out, and I had looked at the program that the two of you had gone to. I'd looked at several other programs. I found that program, and I was like, that's mine. That's my program and what I want to do. So uh, so anyway, like, but between all the variables, but you were, were kind of the an initiation of all of those things that led me to go back to school to get my doctorate. So thank you for, for paving the way for, for other people to – like myself, that looks at it and goes, I don't know if that's something I want to do, I can do, I'm smart enough to do. And then you did it, and I went, oh, I could totally do exactly. it. If I could if I could do it, you're <laughs> definitely smart enough to do it, right? <laughs> oh, man. Well, you you actually are, are quite brilliant. I appreciate the work that you do. And I want to want to talk a little bit more about what's going on right now. There's a big transition, obviously, with fitness shifting in towards the homes and 
a lot of people are picking up on it. And there's the, the group classes and the one-on-one -on -one virtual training. And our producer, Greg, has done a wonderful job putting together programming with, with one of my friends to, for online virtual training. But there, there's more out there that we know of. And you, uh, as far as I know, are, is it the director of education at Technogym? Correct, for North America, yeah. Yeah, okay, so the director of education, North America, for Technogym, which uh, within the name itself, kind of gives something away, right? So there's a big technology component. Um, and, and this isn't just to sing the song of Technogym, but it's to understand more about what's going on and kind of really what, what does the future look like with fitness and tech? And now what does it possibly mean for fitness and tech and home now that we're seeing a big transition? Correct. Yeah, it's interesting. So, you know, Technogym was founded in 1983 and our founder, Mr. Alessandri, Nerio Alessandri, he had a vision back then to call it Technogym. So, you know, what an amazing company to work for because it's always been on the forefront, but now especially – you know, and again, I could kind of parlay this into what we call our lines of business, but every single line of business we work with, there's a quick change that are like, wait a minute, we need to be connected digitally with our customers, our clients, et cetera. And fitness professionals are always going to have a place in the industry, but we have to adapt. You know, you, Rick, you and I have adapted in our career many times, you know, but what I would say is even our professional sports teams we work with, all of a sudden they can't control their athletes' workouts. They now like they're sending PowerPoints out or this, that it's not an efficient way. They can't track the data. So I'm blessed to work for such an amazing company that our equipment's always done that. But it just comes down to that any line of business now, whether you're a one-on-one -on -one personal trainer, whether you own your own business, doesn't matter the size, scope of business, you have to have a digital presence. You have to be able to communicate with your membership base in their home because I think everyone, they're going to come back to facilities. There's no question about that. But we have seen such a huge increase in home sales. And part of that is because I think people don't want to be ever stuck again. And I think, though, habits change. And once you've changed a habit, right, sometimes you stay with that new habit. So, you know, Rick, you and I were talking this morning. I'm surprised how efficient my workouts are at home. I'm still going to work out at home now after this. But I still want to be back in a gym. I still want to be in that environment. But that doesn't mean that just because I might work out at home a little more doesn't mean I still don't want to be connected with somebody from a professional standpoint. And what I find exciting, right, there's always opportunity in any situation is before when I did one on one, I was, you know, confined to a small area where people would drive when I was doing one on ones. Now I can train people globally. So there's opportunities. And it's not going to it's not going to go back, but it's just our job as fitness professionals to adapt as well as our customers have been forced to adapt. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that uh, it's a conversation I had. I did a I did a, a paid for event with a company called Talent Hack. It's based mm -hmm. here in New York City, but they're doing what they call their business accelerator program. And I did one on how to sell. And it was it was an hour long thing on how to sell and. And, and that was part of the discussion. The discussion included the fact that, you know, if you were a personal trainer in St. Louis um, and, and now this hit, you know, you're no longer, if you transition online, kind of stuck with the clients that are in St. Louis, right? You could be with somebody that's in Singapore. Uh, so the, the scope of your practice is much, much greater. However, you'll probably still train more people that are in St. Louis because that is your market and you'll be able to kind of bounce back and forth between who wants to now join me for a one-on-one -on -one session when we reopen and still maintain these online virtual training or the online programming that exists. Um, there's a lot of cool tech that's out there and you know from from the Pelotons to the Aptives to Mirror and all of it and, and Technogym uh, a lot of people doing a lot of great things. Uh, Rumble has gotten into it, and uh, you know this. This is something that's being delivered regularly or building regularly up to this point. And I think that it's this is going to accelerate everything. Uh, what are some of the ways that that you see trainers as individuals being able to utilize this, and not just large companies like? Tech the gym and Peloton using this. Sure. You know, I mean, Rick, you and I have had conversations before. Let's even someone say someone trained with me two hours a week. There's still a lot of time left to, to their bad habits. 
So I view this as like an add-on, right? So now I can be more interactive with my clients seven days a week, six days a week, five days a week, whatever. But now I'm actually gonna have more time with them, even though they still may come in for two hours a week. You know, and I've said this before, and I know you've got the same philosophy. You know, you mentioned it with your doctorate. It's re- education's a race with no finish line. I've said that about fitness. It's it's just an ongoing process. Whether you get a credential or not, that doesn't matter. You're always learning. So when you look at your clients, you know, they always need some more something from you. And I truly think at some point, you know, you know, you know I've talked about corrective exercise. People may find a way to do some of their general fitness alone, but maybe the hands-on becomes more specialized now. Whatever, you know, I mean, that, that there's a lot of different ways to go about it, and you're going to find your niche. Like you and I have a martial arts background. That might be part of our niche and or our tools that we bring out. But I like it because I can be more – engage with my membership or my clients over the whole week now, you know, cause we always struggled. Like, yeah, they give us two hours a week and they expect amazing results. Well, you know, now we can be more interactive with them throughout the whole week. Yeah. We, we talk about the, the hours in the week. I, I believe I have this right. 168 hours in the week. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you, you add two hours of exercise to that. That's, that's still 166 hours to support what you've done or to mess it up. Um, and, and let's be honest, like throughout the years, I've had people that have said to me, I work out really hard with you two to three times a week so that I can go and have the dinners that I want and have you know the, the party or the whatever it is. Uh, and, and I get that and I respect that. I, I believe there will be some shifts that change and like, I've said multiple times, people have different reasons for whatever path that they choose. And whatever path you choose that leads you to fitness, I'm glad you're here, right? So if that is because I want to drink or it's because I want to eat, it's a, to exit, whatever. And we can change what we change. And as I've always heard, you can't change everything, but you may be able to influence. And that's a big part of it. And I, I think that one of those things of influence are at-home fitness equipment, right? Because mm-hmm. part of that influence is I've, I've got a, a treadmill in the corner or bands underneath my bed or uh, a selectorized dumbbell set that is hiding in a closet somewhere, and it's present. Now, it may not be used very often, but it's present. Mm-hmm. Uh, wh- what is the value of these, not necessarily a shift away from the gym, but shifting things towards the home so that, that that it's more accessible to us for the other 166 hours. Correct. I think, you know, with, with how busy our lives are and it, that could be, you know, due to family and kids or careers or multiple, you know, multiple jobs or commuting, et cetera. That part, like you said, that is just part of life, but the more convenient exercise becomes, and then if you, you know, if you have an understanding of what you're supposed to accomplish, you know, you and I have gone back and forth some really cool conversations. And, you know, I did my doctoral study more on why people do or don't exercise. And one of the biggest reasons they don't is the fear of failure or they don't understand. They get frustrated. They don't have the goals. So now if we can connect with them either because of its smart digitally connected equipment, because there's a trainer appearing in their house or whether they're part of a group that, you know, on Friday nights, Rick Ritchie's groups get together and, you know, maybe they did all their one-on-one training, but there's a, you know, some type of community. It just holds people accountable. They're more likely to use that equipment because if that equipment is, you know, if it's in somebody's home that truly doesn't know how to engage it in multifaceted ways and create programs, uh, you know, I always use the word training instead of exercise. Training is specific, you know, scientific principles based on a result where exercise sometimes is just a lot of stuff and sometimes it's good or bad, you know, then people, you know, we want to see results. All of us do. So if we can use this digital connectivity now to engage and activate what they have in their home, they're more likely to use it. If they're using it, we know they're going to get the results. And then it just continues that momentum of they're happy and they're successful. Now, what, what have you been doing since you've been stuck at home that uh, for your I, exercise or training for that matter? <laughs> It's interesting. I wasn't fully prepared. I was lucky enough that uh, it wasn't by design. Um, you know, there's a piece that I love from Techno Gym called our skill bike, and I just wanted to get better at it. It's a performance cycle. So thank God I had that. Live in Florida, you know, so I could be outside a lot. 
Um, and then I had suspension training, some kettlebells. And then with my background, obviously, you know, I know how to use body weight to my advantage and go through different phases of training. But I can tell you right now, you know, my wife, uh, she has one of our, our my runs, great treadmill. It's not, you know, I'm not a treadmill guy, basically. I'd rather be outside. But I've already looked at like, okay, I need to add a few things. And I, it's not because maybe the next pandemic. It's because I've actually enjoyed working out at home. It saves me time. And now if I have a couple of pieces, I still want to get to a gym. But now I'm like, you know what? If I have just a couple of these or that, now I'm not forced to have to go to the gym. So, you know, thank goodness I had enough to get me through. But I've already got, you know, the next piece or two and some extra kettlebells and dumbbells coming my way. Good. All right. Cool. I like that. Um, I'll, I'll run through what we've been doing. And it's been really focused uh, as, a, as a family workout. So mm-hmm. what we do is we have five people in the family. Uh, sometimes my wife will join. Sometimes she is busy trying to help fix everything that just got destroyed with three kids in the house. Uh, and so what, what, what we'll do is we set up five stations. Even if there are four people, we set up five stations. And we do 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, geez, that would be incredible. Uh, it, we do 30 seconds apiece, and we go to the next station, and we go to the next station, we go to the next station. We run that three times, mm-hmm. and then, because they're relatively young kids, so 11, 9, and 4, so my 4-year-old is on top of it, as, as well as anybody else is in the family. Um, and then we switch up the exercises, so they get to decide. All right, how are we going to switch it up? And it's funny because they are, you know, they they do it now. They're like, I I want mountain climbers here, and I'm like, oh, you know what mountain climbers are? Okay, I want this. So we have one little suspension trainer, and then everything else is uh, a, a weight exercise, and we cycle through it again for another round of three. So it, it's 15 minutes total of work. That's almost nonstop. I'm sweating at the end of it. Um, you know, I'm pushing myself. The kids are going through the motions and not so tired, or maybe they're just in much better shape than me. But it's a big part of the process, right? And so what I can't do in the gym is I go to the gym every day and my family knows that I'm gone. Yep. That's what they know. And they know that the gym is associated with that. But they don't have any skin in the game. There's no participation with it. There's dad goes to the gym and then dad comes back home and that's associated with work. Mm -hmm. Now it's shifted and now we're doing things together as a family and we're putting together these 15 minute routines and running through them and working together and playing together. And, you know, as, as much as I might harp on them to get their schoolwork done and to focus on this and pay attention to this, when they're exercising, it's amazing. I'm just like a compliment monster. I'm like, oh, that's it, crushing it over there, Jazzy. Keep going, deep push up, no wiggle worm on that push up. I love it. So it's fun. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. Fun. Yeah, and 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 of course that goes to to really no tech whatsoever, except for my interval timer that dings and we all jump over and run to the next section. Yeah. Um, you got to make it fun, you know. What I mean, that's the key thing, and why I think really some of this ability to train people at home, you could still have that interaction, make it fun. And for me, it's all about habits. You know what I mean? Very much, I try to regiment. I'm extreme, I'm blessed, I'm extremely busy, but I'm in front of a computer a lot now. So I purposely wake up at the same time, and I do about 30 minutes of mobility and corrective in the morning. And then anytime I'm on a long phone call, if weather permitting, I'm out walking. You know, just just to keep my body moving, that's not even part of my exercise. I just, you know, I don't want to be confined and I'm lucky that I, I'm in an area that I can do that. But the same thing, like what you're talking about, you have habits, you schedule it, and it becomes just part of what you do. I love that. And I also love that, that you spoke to uh, non-exercise movement. Mm-hmm. And the, I mean, the research is really wonderfully clear on it that the majority of the calories that we burn throughout the day is non-exercise movement. Uh, and that's why it's so important to know that the getting up out of the chair, to, to walk around, to pace, sometimes even to fidget mm-hmm. can be so beneficial because just doing little things, and that's one of the problems that so many people have is that if they can't do great things, then they won't do the little things, correct? Right? And, and that's what exercise feels like. Exercise feels like, well, that's a big thing and I'm supposed to do minimum of 30 minutes a day, six to seven days a week, heart rate, 
at, at 70% of my heart rate reserve or more. And, and you kind of go through these supposed tos and shoulds. And what people don't realize is that far more caloric expenditure happens because we're just walking around and taking a yeah. phone call and, and being up and standing and not sitting. And, uh, and, and I'm with you on the, the schedule, the sleep hygiene, as, as it's called a lot of times, is finding what's your best sleeping pattern. Um, and sticking to it and for years and it's because we're trainers if I don't have a 6 a.m. client I'm not getting up at 5 if I don't have a 7 a.m. client I ain't getting up at 6 right so I would just sleep through it uh, and and now that's changed a lot like I go to bed around the same time before COVID I'll admit that I'm, I'm brushing my teeth getting ready for bed around that 10 o'clock mark it's about 11 o'clock now Mm -hmm. I, I don't sleep past the times that I've been getting up normally, though. So it's still I still set my alarm. Just you know, my, I'm more of like a ten to five guy. You know, nine forty-five. You know, still getting up at five o'clock. By five thirty, you know, I'm doing my mobility routine. And six o'clock, that's when I, you know, start on to the next thing. I mean, I, that works for me. But research, as you know, shows that having a schedule definitely is beneficial. Right. And, and really what it goes to is that you, you can be a night owl, right? Mm -hmm. Like the early burn, bird doesn't necessarily get the worm and it's not early to bed, early to rise. What we found is that people who are night owls are just as productive and just as smart mm -hmm. and as alert, but they maintain a constant schedule. And I think that's valuable. And then I'm join you also in the mobility club. So first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. I'll foam roll. I'll go through a stretching series that yep. it's my series and it alters a little bit based on some tightnesses, especially because I had a uh, strained a hamstring doing sprints uh, outside. Oh. Yeah. So it took me, it took me some while, a while to recover. I'll be back to outdoor running soon, but, yeah. but still working on slowly getting that hamstring back to where it needs to be altering my programs when they can and, and, and need to be altered but also staying on that schedule. So uh, I've been able to, to crush that and do my foam rolling and stretching and watch the full three seasons of Ozark since we've been in. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, but the scheduling is good and the scheduling is important. Uh, are there any other things that you do while you're at home, like your stick tos? Do you, do you list things out? Do you schedule your day? How does that work? Do you schedule your meals at this point? Um, I wouldn't say schedule my meals per se because it's just automatic. I mean, you've been around me enough. I'm, the way I eat, just again, it's part of a regimen. Everything's process. You know, when I say process, not the food. I right. process. What's my activity going to be today? And if I know I'm not going to be crushing my higher intensity workout, I do try to make the adjustment on my calories, or I get out and walk more. You know, my hydration is huge. You know, I drink. I'm a club soda guy, so I'll drink at least six or eight club sodas a day you know, minimum, so again, very regimented, but that's always worked for me. I'm blessed that way that being regimented works for me very well. But what I do is I have to, I have to go through my to-do list at the end of the day and rewrite it. Because the one thing is, you know, it's hard for me to disconnect because I really enjoy my work. I'm passionate about it. So I can just be thinking about work all day long. And, you know, I, even though I, that's great, there's a time where you need to disconnect. So part of my ending routine is to go through my to-do list and I have all my digital stuff, but I still have, I should, I should have brought it up here with me, you know, eight and a half by 11. It has to be in a Sharpie. It's my OCD and I have to go through and I take the stuff I crossed out or highlighted that's more important and I reframe it for the next day in what I think is the right sequential order. And it just gives me some closure. It allows me to say, okay, now it's time to slowly disconnect from work because when I start working for Techno Gym, you know, I would travel a lot and then I started working from home. And with my mindset, and a lot of people have said this, that work from home, there's no start and stop today. I'd get up at five o'clock because that's my routine. And all of a sudden I'd be creatively thinking because I'm a morning person and then it'd be eight o'clock at night and I wouldn't have shut the computer off where when I worked at a country club, I had the drive in and then on the drive home, it was time to start disconnecting. So I had to really focus on not burning myself out by just letting the day go because I was in my home office, etc. So I think a lot of people now that are working from home, that this is new to them, you're going to have to find that routine. And it's hard to disconnect sometimes when you're at home because it's just 
so easy to keep going and going and going where you think working from home would be easy to maybe not focus. So, you know, I've heard this before and I know you're working from home now for, the, you know, for a big chunk of your time more than you used to as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm, I feel, uh, I feel blessed that there's some work that can still be done from home and I'm not training as much anymore. So I see a lot of the trainers that used to be renting my gym and now they're, they're still training and I'm like, mm, you know, like I've, I've wanted a piece of something. I'm, I'm blessed that there's still some work to be done at home, but I, I've tried to, you know, the first week I was here, I, I thought, man, this is, it, it, it's a, a staycation, right? Like I'm, I'm at home, I'm going to watch TV because it's not something I do very often. I'm going to relax and not do anything. And the kids didn't have school the first week. So we went out and we played a lot and, um, the, in New York, things have gotten much stricter and um, more dangerous. And so we're not going outside to play really anymore. And their online school is incredibly challenging. And I feel it's the same way for my daughter. Like she's, she's having, it, it's difficult to, to turn off even her schoolwork where she'll spend time. But also I had a conversation with her today that we need to schedule your breaks because I'll come in and she'll be on her phone, like because it's really easy to grab a phone and and start doing this for a minute and then go back to this and go back to your phone. And so I said, babe, let's schedule your time to be on the phone so that while you're working on your work, let's just do that. Let's just do that. And then when you're focusing on you know an engagement with your friends or whatever you're surfing or what, like just do that and like be all in and do it. But put those schedules in place. So I do that in my calendar. I, I schedule my day. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my phone call that I'm going to have. It's a person I'm talking to. This is what I'm planning out for the day. Um, I do it in my phone. The only thing that I actually take notes on are some of these calls. And I've been using this from, uh, it's an NASM book from long ago. I'm sure you remember it, but I do. I had my journaling. So this is this is my journaling that again I'm trying to to be plugged in and on and teched out and connected and then that's my way to disconnect and to actually take a pen put it to paper uh do you feel sometimes that you get teched out uh especially as as technical as your world can be um yeah. that, that you do need to to bring it back down into you know, like pen and paper or, you know, meditation or, uh, you know, what, whatever that that may be going on with you in order to unplug. Sure. Yeah, I'm blessed in the sense that my work has gotten busier in the sense that, you know, as the education director for Technogym is there's so much information coming through me now because we can't be in front of so many people. So blessed that way. But also now I'm on my computer so much more where before I could be traveling, I could be at a trade show. I had different types of interaction. I feel bad for my computer. I feel it's going to like melt eventually because <laughs> thank God it's a brand new one because I mean, it's on 12 hours a day. So what I do now is I've always been a morning person, but I used to like working out more midday in a perfect world. But now I make sure that I get up, I do my mobility, I go through my morning routine, check in emails because I have a lot of colleagues from Italy. So I want to make sure that they're not waiting on me. Then I purposely stop at around 6.30 and work out till 7.30. And I do my absolute best to not put my headphones in because if my phone dings, I get distracted. I'm like, oh, what if somebody needs me? And I'm like, you know what? I used to be on airplanes for four hours. Like they survived, right? So now I don't even listen to my music on my phone because it's so hard for me when I hear the ding to be like, well, what if, you know, like I'm like, all right, this hour is for me. And I'm better, like I enjoy working out without music now because I'm more, it's a, it's in the morning. You know, generally, you know, my wife is just getting up or not. So I have to be quiet. And I have found that I actually enjoy my workout better than the noise. And then it sets my stage for the day. And you know me, I've done a ton of research as you have on cognitive fitness. My brain's then ready to go for the rest of the day. And then, like I said, anytime I'm on a phone call, if it doesn't have to be a Skype or something, I'm walking. Because I just want to get upright. I want to disconnect from some level of technology best I can. You know, but it's hard. It's 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 gotta be I have to get better at it. That's not I'm not the best at it. I have to get better, but I have a, at least a strategy. Oh, I love that. I love that. I want to go back to just talk a little bit more about some technology and the um, connectivity. 
So is there a connection between any of the devices that are being used these days, whether it's an Apple Watch, which is what I have, um, I know Fitbit, which has it recently bought by Google, so I'm sure there are big things on the horizon there for Fitbit. Some of the other technologies, um, obviously heart rate monitors and things like that, are there, are there connectivities that go with kind of existing bio trackers and biometric trackers that that connect with what you guys do at Technogym? Yeah, I mean, it's it, like I said, it's such a privilege to work for this advanced company because we have our own digital ecosystem. And I was on a, a webinar with about four or five other speakers and someone said, what are you guys doing different? And I'm like, nothing. And what I mean by that, business we're doing things different with our sales team. But we've been a smart digitally connected equipment company for more than a decade. And what that means is we have our My Wellness app, which is a complete solution where you can track your workouts with or without our equipment. I could go out for a run and I can track my run. I can use things like Fitbit, push it through, Garmin, Zwift, all that. Or if I'm on techno gym equipment, I can log it. Or if I'm on non techno gym equipment. So this was, we were prepared for this differently, of course. This wasn't the reason that we've been the smart digitally connected equipment company. But also a lot of our customers, they have the ability then on our pro site to send content out to their customers. So that's where, again, like I said, it was it's business as usual for our equipment and for us that we have a whole ecosystem that can bring in these popular third party apps. So, you know, again, way more advanced than anything else in the marketplace that way. But where we now have to prep is a lot of our partners used a bit or a piece or some of it. And now they're like, well, wait a minute. Let me absorb all of this because now going forward, as we talked about at the beginning of this, no one's going backwards where they're going to just let go of technology that they learn to use now. So we have a lot of our partners going, you know what? People are going to come back to our facilities, but we need to stay really connected with them when they're home. Because guess what? When they're home, somebody else is providing that information. You That's want right. to be you want to be providing your customers that information in the facility and outside the facility. So I think that's going to be a big game changer. You know, you mentioned Rumble, who we've partnered with in the past at Techno Gym, that they found a way to connect with their customers outside. That's not going to go away because why would you want somebody else to give them that that information? Right. No, that's a great point. That is a great, mm-hmm. great point. Let me, let me go to our producer, Greg. And Greg, I just want to do a quick little check to see if there are any questions that have come through from Marty. Yeah, we have a handful of them. Elizabeth in the chat wants to know, what type of interval timer do you use? Oh, uh, I think I mentioned an interval timer, uh, and I, I'll look it up right now. I know where it is. So, um, and I, I like this one. I, it's just called interval timer, but what I can do is I can show you the app. And here's what I like about it. Um, You can schedule your intervals, which I think for most interval timers you can, but what's really valuable about scheduling your own timers is that I have several things that are scheduled regularly. So I have my, my boxing rounds. So when I do my three minutes on, one minute off, and sometimes it's boxing and sometimes it's just, you know, train like a fighter. Right. So you do some high intensity interval training and maybe even some circuits for three minutes and then you take a minute off and we can go several rounds on that. Um, I do also 30 second time, 35 second timers usually. So what will happen is the first exercise you do is 35 seconds. Uh, but then you got to transition to the next one, which takes a few seconds in, in a circuit. So after you hear the ding, you kind of have five seconds for that. 35 seconds before you get into your next one. And then the ding just means transition to the next one. Um, I actually can't find it on my phone, but I can type it in, but it doesn't show you what the app looks like when I do it. So uh, it uh, App Store interval timer, check it out. I hope it works well for you. Uh, Marty, do you use anything that uh, like an interval timer or something like that? I'm using the Technogym My Wellness app. It's You can download it. You don't it's available and that way I can track my workouts, but there's always the ability to do those type of things as well. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Yep. All right, cool. 
right. Uh, Greg, what else? Yeah. Yeah, this time I won't ask you to look at your phone uh, and, and spend time doing that. Josh wants to know, is there a basic starter kit of minimal equipment that you'd recommend for clients to facilitate entry-level online training when working with a trainer? You want me to start with that one? Yeah, go for it. I mean, honestly, I think it's going to be what the type of training they like to do and obviously what you're going to train them in, right? So. You know, clearly, you know, Rick and I are both going to say you got to have some type of foam roller or percussion instrument. Got to do something to the soft tissue. From there, there's going to be depending on are we talking resistance training? Are we talking cardio training? And what's their budget? But basically speaking, some type of mat, bands and dumbbells can get you a long way. And then from there, to me, everything is just a bonus on if they're going to be able to do that, you know, depending on where they're going to work out, what they're capable of. Some things need to be mounted to walls. Some things that have to have special electric. But, you know, I mean, I think everybody on this webinar that is instructing people, if you have something for soft tissue, some type of, you know, mat for body weight, and then light dumbbells and bands, you can get real creative. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think that uh, what you can also do is if you're a big kettlebell fan, just remember that you can use dumbbells the same way you use kettlebells, right? You can swing, you can clean, you can snatch. Like there are a lot of things you just don't have to hold it by the end of it you can hold it by the handle and do it with there is there a difference in how it works on the body slightly but you know these are these are things that can be put together um and what i've seen a lot of which i really appreciate because a lot of times the even if you do get dumbbells are going to be pretty light so some of the ways that you can make things a little bit heavier and i've seen quite a bit on social is a backpack and people will load up books and they'll load up food and they'll put all sorts of thing in their in their backpack to make it a little bit heavier yeah. uh, and then you could get your your leg exercises in and you know with a little additional weight that maybe uh, uh, 10 pound dumbbells may not cut for you or the dumbbells in addition to the backpack could be helpful so i go with you know the stuff that you have in your house like a backpack bands um, small dumbbells if you can get them and I know that those aren't really essential things right now for people so we're having a hard time getting delivery with those um, and then things that you can hang from your door so uh, whether that's a jungle gym or a TRX or whatever brand that you want to do but some type of body weight um, strap that you can utilize then you, you've added to your toolbox uh, and the mat, I think, is important just so, you know, if you're doing stretches, it's not going to hurt your knee. If you're doing exercises while on your back, then you're not hurting your back or things like that by, you know, rolling or rubbing into your back that you could do like I have here, which is hardwood floor, doesn't go over very well. Uh, I find carrying your three-year-old around while you're working out is a quite effective way to add a little bit of uh, extra to things. Uh, we have another one. Uh, Theodoros, I uh, apologize if I mispronounced that, wants to know, is it possible to observe or see our client's 3D motion and correct and improve it via remote distant uh, technology? So uh, how, how do you guys handle that and how would you recommend Theodoros would? Gotcha. I think I think due to technology, people are more comfortable getting in front of a camera. You know, before they may not have felt as comfortable. So, you know, with Zoom or, you know, you can also ask somebody in their home to video them, give them the instructions. So maybe it's a cleaner cut. And, you know, I always to me, the video of somebody's squat or movement is their property. So in essence, when I was in front of them in a club, I'd say, can I use your camera? Can we video it so I can show it to you? Can, can you save it? And a lot of times people say, go ahead, you know, you save it. But remember, you know, to me, that's their property. But nowadays you might ask them, you know, if you can't see it, yeah, maybe your computer camera is not as updated, et cetera. Maybe they can uh, zoom, you know, take a shot. We transfer to you. So those are some, some of the options I like. You know, Rick Wood, how do you use it or what do you, you do? Yeah, I, I think it's specifically to the question for a 3D, it's it's not there. I mean, you can't you can't be in three dimensions on a 2D screen, but you you can do well with it. And um, it, it can be challenging because, you know, right now you probably set up everything with like the cardinal planes. Right. So you're going to look like a, a front view. You're going to look from a, a very specific and direct side view. But you don't get to see things in the transition. Now, we don't set up our training that way either in transition, but it doesn't matter because when you go from a front view to a side view, you see things. There are things that you see that you pick up on that you may not pick up on otherwise. And 
Uh, I think for for new trainers, you know, very direct, very succinct, like look from the front, look from the side as you progress, even look at what's going on posterior view. But at some point you're going to walk around and you're going to see things and you just don't have the ability to do that. Is it still beneficial to to do the the two dimensional camera version of what we're doing? I think it's very beneficial if we're doing an overhead squat or I'm watching somebody even bridge while they're they're on the floor and I want to see their movement. There are things that we can do and things that we can't. But um, do the best you can with what you got, and when you get better stuff or better opportunities, then make those things happen. But yeah, uh, Theodorus, I think this is a, a great opportunity to continue. But here's the other thing. If you record, like Marty was talking about, you always have the ability to go back and see where they were. They get to see where they were. And that's not something that you get to do without technology. Uh, everybody just takes our word for it. And throughout the years, I've seen, especially in things like uh, skin fold measurements and girth measurements in um the, the measurements for agonia metrics where people will fluff information so that they can show their clients that they're making progress. But when you have digital captures of it, you, you can't. You can't fluff that information. That, that's what they see, too. And they can see the difference between their movement patterns and you know, the feet out or the back arching of their head forward and that they do, did it and they don't do it as much. They do it less. There's some strategies that have been put together. So it's a wonderful opportunity to, to, to get to lose some things, but to get more things out of it as well. So you really have to highlight what the benefits are and and understand that there are deficits that are there that would be better if you were in person, but now is the opportunity to focus on the digital. And then when we go back to what life will be, uh, to be able to much more easily marry those things together and allow them to work in congruency versus I train this way in person and I train this way uh, digitally but those, I think those worlds, and Marty, you probably agree with this 100%, uh, those worlds are going to blend a lot more coming out of COVID, right? Absolutely. No doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, Greg, you have, uh, have anything else for us? Uh, no other questions at this time, but I, I'll let you know if anything else comes through. Perfect. Well, what I'm going to do right now is uh, wrap it up. So uh, I want to thank you again. Dr. Marty Miller, thank you so much for your time, thank your you, your willingness to, to do this, and, and uh, even last minute by taking a, a text and a phone call this morning. So thank you so much for doing that, and I look forward to uh, seeing you again soon. Yeah. I don't know what that's going to look like, but but I do look forward to it. Uh, is there any anything that you'd like to part with and uh, bestow on these people that might be listening right now? Yeah. First, thanks, Rick, for having me on. It's a, it's a complete honor spending some time with you. It's good to communicate with you. But most importantly, to the group out there that took time out of their busy day to log on, I hope you guys saw some value with, you know, we're always trying to push the envelope of the best content, best education. And, you know, Rick and I do this as well as all the other instructors. So we just love being involved with all of you and trying to help you best we can. So, you know, just what I would say is things are going to change. There's going to be positives that come out of this. I know it's a, it's a tough time for a lot of people in this industry right now, but, you know, we're definitely here to support you. And then, you know, look at the opportunities that you're going to be given because there will be. And then most importantly, we have a massive job to do with technology, without technology to get people, you know, back into their routines to keep them healthy because, you know, there's a lot of stress going on right now. So we're going to be a huge part of people feeling normal again. And I know all of us take that responsibility seriously or we wouldn't be in this industry. No, that is right. Uh, so thank you. I appreciate that. And let me just do a, a shout out for Friday. So Friday, 12 noon Eastern time, we're going to have Angie Miller, no relationship to Marty, at least as far as I know. Nope. Uh, but she nope. is a AFA and NASM instructor. She's also a psychotherapist and uh, it was a big part of the motivational interviewing process that that NASM was able to start implementing into some of their programs. So I'm going to have her on as a guest. So if you would like to tune in, learn a little bit more about motivational interviewing and also a little bit about that kind of combination between what mental fitness and wellness 
uh, benefits come through physical fitness and physical benefits. So that'll be a good conversation to have. Hope you guys can join us. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the NASM CPT podcast and Facebook live webcast.